Okay, heads are on. I just finished torquing this one. I did 50 in the torque sequence, then I went 100, and then I went 130 foot-pounds. I am slap wore out. And this side, the heater box is all in the way. And then I encoded this side with some WD-40 because I'm not going to be able to get it all together tonight. So I'm going to go ahead and coat this side with some WD-40 and pack it up for tonight. And then uh, tomorrow will be a big day. It will definitely be the engine will be assembled i don't know if i'll be able to get it running but it will be darn close i promise you that so yeah i'm gonna go ahead and i like to all this cast iron go ahead and just get everything a good coat and when we do our intake gasket i'll have to clean it all off um give us a good contact surface but um i just the worst thing for me to see is engine that a lot of hard work and cleaning has happened and then yet we we let it go to some rust i'm also as you can see putting some uh oil down our wd-40 down our spark plug holes i'm doing that so we can i'm gonna get a light for that one we're gonna turn the engine over make sure we don't develop no rust it's it was kind of warm today it wasn't too bad uh, we're getting into those fall time temperatures but I was sweating out my gloves, so I took those off so I knew my final torques. And that's why I'm really um, worried about the sweat and the salt and then getting on this fresh metal. And a lot of hard work's been put into cleaning. And then we just get more corrosion out to double our work. So anyways, I'm going to cut this off for tonight. We'll probably pick up the same video tomorrow depending on time. We might have to do a part two, but you'll see. All right, good morning. So it is dark outside. I couldn't sleep last night. I'm, I'm giddy about working on this car. It's actually like 4.30, maybe five o'clock in the morning. Uh, so I just wanted to give y'all, we got a mess, a little update while I'm going through this morning. Probably not gonna clean this up until a little bit after. Uh, I need to get the hood popped. I need to get some light out here. Uh, we got to do the valve train and we'll see, and we need a prime and we're probably gonna drain the oil. So let's get All started. Right. We got some lighting out here now. I just have the air cleaner on it just in case uh, it rained last night. I didn't want to risk getting any water and anything. So move that to the side. The valve covers are just sitting on uh, nothing. <laughs> but like I said, it's more about keeping debris. Ooh, we don't want to tear those. Uh, but yeah, it's like that. We're going to put the rocker arms and push rods in. The heads are torqued. The intake manifolds torqued. The heads are torqued to 130 foot pounds. And I did it in like a sequence of. Oh man, I need to get this off. Hold on. Oh, I don't want to tear it. Uh, a sequence. I did like 25, 50, 100, 130, something like that. Uh, I just worked myself up. Intake manifold, I torqued it to 35 foot pounds. And that's just going off looking on some forms on what is the right torque specs for that. Uh, do the same thing. I just uh, worked it up. If you don't know, um, I looked up the torque specs on like the sequence, but you pretty much just work yourself out in a circle. You pretty much use as long as you work yourself from the inside out because uh, you don't want to start on the outside and although you think it's really straight but when you start torquing something down that metal will actually form like a little you know thousands or whatever hundreds of a gap um in the middle so you start from the inside out to make that metal flatten out on the edges so it's almost like if you're laying down a sticker you know you don't start from the outside in same thing for your intake manifold start from the inside out it's supposed to be pretty much just a, a big circle working yourself out but that's all on the forums Okay, so I'm gonna get the push rods. I got to clean everything, blow everything off, make sure we're good to go. And uh, then that's a pretty good update from this point of view. Oh, I'll show y'all. So I took those old lifters and what I did is either some um, Summit branded lifters and um, I took the retaining clip out of these and you can see i took the retaining clip that clip out and i put those into four other lifters and it wasn't that hard i just used a, a screwdriver and worked it out 
and then I kind of opened it a little bit and then I put in a new one. And you can see, it just goes in these little grooves. See that little groove right there above my finger now? Or you can see how it's in this one. It wasn't that bad, I didn't really want to show anybody. Um, this is one of the old retaining clips. Uh, broke off, it was actually stuck in there. Um, one of these was actually beaten, where you can see where the lifter has been hammering on it. Uh, sorry, I don't see it on this one, but anyways, some things we had going on retaining clips, and that allowed us to put the intake on that once I had the, the lifters in there. So, all right, let me grab these push rods and start making forward progress. Okay, so we got the passenger side in, uh, all push rods are in on the driver's side. One thing I loved I did, I was very detailed with my numbering, I'll show you. So I got everything in zip lock bags. And I even numbered the baggie that what rock arm came off of. Am I gonna be a liar? Nope, looks like that is one. Yeah, number one cylinder. And uh, everything's in baggy, so everything's clean. I am rinsing a few of them off if I see any debris. But uh, yeah, it's going in super simple. Everything's staying where it should go. And just one step at a time, I'm gonna get them all in so I can torque them all down with a torque wrench at the same time. If anybody's unfamiliar with the uh, ozone bills, these are non-adjustable. So pretty much, uh, it's like kind of like LS. You, If you want to adjust it, you can't really adjust the push rod link like an LS, not that I'm aware of. It's pretty much, in ozone bill world, you just convert it to a, a, an adjustable uh, setup. I could be wrong on getting into push rod link stuff, but everything I've ever seen until I joined the LS world was you just converted these to adjustable rocker arm set up in like a small block Chevy. So they are adjustable and that's one thing we're gonna be playing around with, with um, is once we get it torqued down and seeing how much uh, looseness we have. These aren't torqued down right now, but we'll just play around like that and just see if something's overly loose or you know, anything just doesn't pass the sniff test. So I'm gonna get these, finish up the driver's side and get these torqued down and be one step okay. closer. So we got everything good to go here. Everything's torqued down to 25 foot pounds according to the interwebs. I don't know if I'm gonna use this three eighths impact, but this is a old um, distributor uh, shaft and we're gonna stick it down our distributor hole here and line it with our oil pump or somewhere in here. Anyways, we're aligning it and I'm gonna run it until I see oil come out of every single one of these rockers. And part of this is re-lubricating our bearings, getting oil all the way back to the top, helping flush everything, running stuff through our, our um, oil filter. It's also ensuring all of our lifters are pumped up because we did um, repair four of them and we had to spray those all out. So yeah, we're gonna go ahead and get this primed, and then I'll do an oil change probably after that. I, I won't. I don't want to do a do this with fresh oil because I don't think this is contaminated. I might actually check that here in a second. Uh, the old dipsticks right here, but uh, I'd rather put fresh oil in and run it uh, after we get all the any debris that could have made it to the bottom. A little more update: uh, valve cover on, valve cover on, header done. This header's done and set for this bolt because the alternator's gonna attach right here. Probably about to drop in a distributor and then I wanna do a compression test. And that's where we're at. We're starting to get ready to, oh, after the distributor, things should really start rolling. Um, and we'll just see, I really wanna, it's still dark outside. I don't know what time it is. Uh, wife just came outside cause the compressor was on uh noise violations going on in the household but anyways yeah we're hopefully uh it'll be daylight time we're ready to fire up and we can really make some uh get this thing maybe moving today updates continue so uh getting ready to put the distributor in and decided to take it apart and it's full of corrosion we got wd-40 everywhere but our mechanical um our mechanical vacuum events was locked up i'm going to talk to the owner about a distributor because it is i'd be surprised if it works 
but uh it's 200 for one uh it is freed up now but it is uh it's pretty rough so also we got our distributor shaft here you can just see the corrosion and everything that's some built up this is an old um oh see we got issues with clearancing here uh, let me let me figure out what's happening but that one's hitting right there and uh yeah this distributor is pretty rough but hopefully it'll get it'll run because i don't think he's gonna want to put that it's no 200 dollars, and he ain't gonna want to put that in the car uh without seeing it run so let me play around with uh adjusting these screws a lot of work uh getting ready to blow it all off but i want to put spark plugs in it first so that's why i put the air cleaner on it and i just found some springs that was ordered we had to do a lot of clearancing around our egr the uh our yes egr2 for our turbo 200 adapter we had to do another correction i'll take that all off and show you all but for now i just clear these cylinders out and it's also allow us to look at some of this oil pressure so, see we got 40 psi sorry so i'm going to go ahead and uh hook up our compression tester on a few of them just for giggles and see what we have and i'll let you know uh find anything crazy but we still got our markings from the last time i do believe i swapped valve covers because the pcv valve was over there and now it's uh, it need, it's supposed to be over here so i'm gonna play around with that see what uh compression we have and then go from there all right we got our spark tester release now if it's firing our distributor could be also uh out of time because it, it isn't set so it's definitely flat firing if you uh saw that so that's good let's see Move that a little bit. Let's see. Woo! Fire! <laughs> All right, verified our timing. It is good. I found two spark plugs backwards. Let's try again. some fuel Got a slight exhaust leak or something right here. Uh, wind up having to take parts off another distributor. Uh, I can't. I don't know what I do with the parts, but yeah, it's running. Got a little belt squeal. Yeah, I had to take parts off a of farmer's 350. Just took it around a block. Um, she is twice the engine she was before and i'm not bsing it, it boils the tires it's just it's um i don't know if it's because it needs 93 or just how i kind of hot posh that uh the parts together for a distributor but it's popping and bucking pretty bad which i've never had a carburetor uh do and it could be something wrong with a carburetor but um i show you cranking up it's pretty good <laughs> 